Welcome back in my most favorite segment of my show, Dining Out Metro, and here I have the famous Dominic Mercurio. Not only are you famous, but you're very handsome as well. I don't know well. why you do that to me. <laughs> but he's the truth. Sit back and tell us like about this. I fly low. Yeah, the glorious Worcester's Best Chef founder, visionary, and this is its seventh year. That's amazing. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's, it's been a lot of fun, I'll tell you. It's a lot, it's a lot to put together, and, and we got the best people to put it together. It's really, it, it's great, you know? The back of the house, which is like everything to do with the, the preparation, the culinary, the food, that you don't really see when you come to Worcester's Best Chef is all handled by Pepper's Fine Catering in Northbrook. Amazing. Those guys do 60 events a year at Mechanics Hall, and Mechanics Hall is a concert hall, so it's not, right. you know, the type of place like the DCU Center where they have huge kitchens. Right. But they set it up so that great chefs like Brian and, and Ken over here can get it done and get it done without too much stress. That's great. And you know what? That's the only way that you put it all together. You know your teams yeah. that make it work. Now we have. We'll go into the Worcester's Best Chef and more about that, but I'd like to introduce the <coughs> two chefs that were available and you chose to come to the show, so yeah. that's great. <coughs> Chef Ken. Oh yeah, this this is Chef Ken from Sturbridge Seafood. It's a new restaurant in Sturbridge and they're all focused on seafood. And um, I'll tell you, you can't even get in the place. It's slammed all the time. Oh, I'm coming. I didn't even know about it. So here, you heard it first on yeah. City Vibes Metro. And we're gonna get, this is Ken's food and on the next segment, this is two full segments, so don't go away. So the first segment we'll talk about Ken's food but before we do that I'd like to meet a former winner right isn't oh yeah isn't this is uh, Brian? this is Brian uh, Brian Treitman from BT's Smokehouse there's no better barbecue guy anywhere in the Northeast than this guy he's won numerous competitions besides which is best chef but last year he placed number two I mean he yeah. was almost the top dog at which is best chef and so this year I think he's hoping to get the whole thing well, you know what? What's great about it is, tell us a little bit about what viewers who've never been there, that, that's <clears throat> unbelievable. You're square. If you haven't been there, that's it. That's the way it is. But you <clears throat> must come because, first of all, um, tell us a little bit about it's. It's on the 26th. Yeah, it's on January 26th. Every year, the event is the last weekend, last Sunday in January, right. the week before the Super Bowl. So there's nothing going on. And right. everybody's got cabin fever. They just want to get out of the house. It's been a month after the holidays wrapped up. And they want to get out and do something, and they love Mechanics Hall because it gives you the feeling of a night out. But more than that, you got 23 of the best chefs from Natick all the way to Sturbridge getting together to bring their A game. And when I say their A game, these are, these are competitors. Yep. They're coming to win. And when, what winning means is if you're one of the top three choices as decided by the judges, mm -hmm. then you go up on stage and you open in front of a, a Thermidor cooktop, a mystery basket of ingredients. So it has one protein, one vegetable, and one starch in it. And you don't know what's going to be in it until you open it up. And you have a half an hour to figure out your best game right there. Right. And then the winner of that is Worcester's Best Chef. It's so exciting. But the best part about it is there's also something called the People's Choice Award. Yes, Which I a lot of that. a lot of restaurant owners like these guys like because it basically gets the foodies in the community to come in and vote what they think, right. who they think the best chef is. And last year for the first time in six years, last year, it was the exact same results. The people voted one, two, three, wow. and the judges voted one, two, three in that order. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and it was it was it was That's astounding. Great. So why don't we get and and oh, you were <laughs> reincarnated. Last <laughs> <from the past. laughs> You transported through a time war. I'm a spirit with the Ambrose spirit. Gosling. Ambrose Gosling. Ambrose Gosling, born in seventeen. And you are an entertainer as well as an ambassador for. I am for Gosling's rum, all the way from Bermuda, and it's the uh, national drink. It's the official drink of Wachusett Ski Mountain, Ooh. and we mix it with ginger beer, and the ginger beer comes from Polar Beverage here in Worcester. Yes. So it's a Worcester drink, dark and stormy mm. together. From Bermuda, and I've had it in Bermuda, and he's going to make one, so you'll see the recipe. So don't, I'm telling you, don't go away between food and drink, and you're going to entertain us later, I too. will. All right, great. <laughs> so, Ken, mm. without further ado, tell us what you've created here. First of all, Oysters. Yeah. I brought a couple items from our menu. Um, our, our real star is our raw bar. So uh, mm. we, we like to keep at least three different kinds of oyster at any, at any time. What we have today is uh, Malpex, or closest to you, and, and Raspberry Points, both out of Prince Edward Island. Wow, nice. that's great. So as you're talking, you talk, I'm going to taste, okay? okay? All right, so go ahead. Well, well, why I brought these was because I'd like to broadcast how, even though the oysters are from the same region, they have very, very different, different flavors. That's great. Okay, and so what other things do you have in your uh, raw bar? In the raw bar, we yeah. have shrimp cocktail, uh, cherry stones, 
you know, stone crab claws when they're in season. This is constantly in flux. That's great. Okay, and so it's, is it all seafood on your menu? 90% uh, is seafood. We always have a beef, a chicken, pasta, vegetarian. So Excellent. Uh, well, Sturbridge is great because I, I live up the street from these guys and, uh, you know, I can walk out of my house and I can smell what's going on down the street at Brian's <laughs> restaurant almost all the time. But you got to go indoors to know what's happening at Ken's. And there's, my wife loves seafood, so we, it's great to have a restaurant dedicated to that. You've got Italian, you've got Rovezzi's, Avellino. Yeah. This, is, this is the best barbecue in the Northeast, like I said. And it's really not up to opinion. It's just not up to opinion. Yeah. There's things that are absolute and there are things that you think might be the case, and this is not it. So you've had the restaurant for four years? Oh, uh, no, oh, four I'm sorry, months. four months. Four mm. months. Brand new. Oh, well, I'm coming because I only eat seafood. You know, yeah. that's, that's all I eat. I don't eat meat. I'll taste it a little bit. Don't worry, Brian, I will. <laughs> but I will. So do you have a culinary background? Uh, it's, you know, I went to Johnson & Wales in Rhode Island. Wonderful. Uh, my mother was a, a fabulous cook. Really yeah. inspired me to follow her. But That's great. And what's your second dish? Let's uh, talk we have about seafood paella also on the menu. Um, just shrimp, uh, little necks, mussels, chicken, andouille sausage, sweet peas. You know, there's a laundry list of ingredients in there. But. This is from Spain originally, yes, right? Yes, Spanish recipe? dish. That's great. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Brian. I'm sorry, Ken, and Brian is going to bring his food in at the next break. And do we have like a word or two from you? Well, we're going to make a drink, and when you come back, we will be consuming it and possibly singing. <laughs> Absolutely. <Don't go> away. <laughs> we certainly will be singing if we're drinking it. All right. So, um, We'll all be right back. Yeah. We're all going to be here, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and I am not Christina Andronopoulos. I've been reincarnated <laughs> since the 18th century because of Brilliant. Ambrose. He's corrupting us. But before we get into Brian's wonderful food and we're, our mouths are watering, make us a dark and stormy. In the old days, it was so difficult to make. It was a rum punch, lots of different ingredients, and it took the colonials a long time. Nowadays, you just add the rum from Bermuda and the ginger beer from Worcester. Um, and Worcester and Bermuda share so many things. I just can't think of any of them right now, <laughs> but uh, this me, is... Me, <laughs> me, I go back and There forth. you go, <laughs> Bermuda and Worcester, the best of both worlds. So why did they call it Dark and Stormy? Because, thank you, Christina, because um, in the 1800s, a guy in Bermuda held that up, and he was a sailor, and he said, if the, sea is, if the sky is ever that color, only a fool would go to sea. So that's why it's the dark wow, and the we storm. Love it. Well, cheers, cheers everybody. Cheers, Happy everybody. New Year. That's great. And, and look at we have we have cans. Just to take it the difficult part out of it, we now serve it in a can, the dark and stormy can. Cheers, everybody. Let's oh, party like it's 1776. This is so good. <laughs> oh, it's delicious. You know what? Start talking, um, Domina, because I'm going to keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, what are you going to do? We're introducing Brian. Yeah, Brian Treitman, is, uh, he's, been, he's a veteran at Worcester's Best Chef, and he's, he's no stranger to competition, culinary competition, and he's got a real focus. And, and the thing is, with guys like Brian, when they focus on something, they invent and innovate all mm. kinds of differences, all kinds of different things. You think barbecue is pretty straight line, but there's a lot of different things you can do with barbecue and Brian always comes up with something ri ridiculously new and, and unusual for people to try. And Brian, you've been in Sturbridge how long? Uh, I've been in Sturbridge in my location for four years now. Just expanded? Wow. Yep, just expanded. We added, we're up to 40 seats now. Wow, uh, that's great. <clears throat> before that I was a little shack on the side of the road in Brimfield. Um, oh. You can't miss it because when you're driving by it's this huge black smoker. Sitting right out front, right and, then, uh, and then the smoke drifting across the road from the smoker that we use inside. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> can you tell us what's here so yep. our, our audience can? Let's so put this down, mm. Ambrose, right here. Well, so let's put this down <coughs> my gullet. By, by the <laughs> way, you're driving all, all the kids at Burgess Elementary School right behind your, yeah. your, your restaurant crazy with the smell. Oh, they, really? They go, I smell French fries. I smell, uh -huh. I smell barbecue. Yeah. That's great. All right, so go ahead. Tell us what this is well, all about. I, I brought some of our, our staples and um, some of the innovative stuff that I do. Um, this is our brisket Reuben. It's probably the best sandwich you'll ever put in your mouth. Um, <laughs> it's it's uh, brisket. Um, do it with a, do it. Our, uh, our coleslaw, some pickled rye sauce, and then I do it on a honey wheat bread. That's um, wonderful. That's, How that's does it taste? Awesome. Don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> and then, um, is it dark and, and stormy? The, these are our spare ribs. Those are um, amazing. So they're, they're smoked for uh, about six hours. Um, um, Go we ahead, do a little, eat. Every, all of our meats are dry rub. Sauces are done on the side. Um, we try to do a sausage every week. Uh, this is a um, 
just lost my train of thought. That's an unbelievable. Bro well, Ambrose bratwurst has been I... eating it, so. Yeah. This is a bratwurst that we made with some um, homemade uh, sauerkraut and then a, a Ford mustard mm -hmm. sauce. That's amazing. Um, and then the in gumbo? the back here I have a gumbo, which is I do once a year. Um, I just finished it, <laughs> and it's it's probably the best thing that I make. Um, that I'm is pretty great. humble about most of the things that I do. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, a recipe that's been handed down to me from Paul Prudhomme uh, down in New Orleans. Wow. Wonderful. That's and, uh, great. It, it, that's it's like the mecca awesome. of, of this kind of food, right? Yep. And so it's got, it takes me four days to make that gumbo. It's got chicken, andouille, shrimp, um, rice, and a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Wow. All right, let me great. ask you something. When, when, you, when you're putting everything together, is it, um, how many how many different things do you have to think of on your menu? How many different things? How many uh, how many times during the year do you want to change up or add new items to your menu? Well, we do. We, our menu is pretty standard. Um, I usually try to run three or four specials a, uh, a week. Yeah. Um, anything from our gumbo. Um, we're doing a ham and cheese right now, uh, grilled ham and cheese with a wow. fresh cured ham that we do. Um, I do the. Um, Pork jowl that I brought to Worcester's Best Chef last year. That's a that was a, great. That's great. Become a staple on our, our specials menu. Mm -hmm. um, so for you know probably 15 times a year we, we change up that's the specials great. that we wow. do. Wow, that's that's good. So we have Brian from BT Smokehouse and this wonderful food that uh, Ambrose is enjoying. You guys were really <laughs> hungry from back then, weren't you? And on and the Sunday when you come, you get to eat all this food. There's like 20 other oh, restaurants. Oh, Sunday, yes, yeah, so we'll go into that in a minute. It's just unbelievable. And Ken, Chef Ken, and your wonderful seafood, which I can't wait to chow down when we get off the air. <laughs> and you put it all together with Worcester's Best Chef, seventh year. I help, I help. There's a, there's a crew of uh, nearly 100 people mm -hmm. that put it together, honestly. Nearly 100 people. This is no game. This is a big event. It's really hard it to put together. And Thousands of people come. If I had a hat right now, I'd tip it off to the to, to Pepper's Catering and yeah, everybody Pepper's. else and the folks at Worcester Technical High School. We um, yes. we bring in a chef. Every chef has a, a, a culinary student from Worcester Technical High School that shadows the chef and gets some real life experience, professional experience, because as you know, these guys manage and run their own restaurants, yep. so they're business people too. And they can teach these chefs to be how to run a business, a culinary right. business or a restaurant. And um, you know, we try to donate proceeds every year, we do. Um, to the Worcester Tech High School, and we love it. We love the students. We love uh, Kevin Leighton up there at the school. That's and, uh, great. They're all they're all a, a bunch Is of Bill people. Is Bill Brady still is, a he's great. teacher there? Yeah, yeah and Bill's Brady, a class love act. Him from Sonoma. <clears throat> yep, he's from Sonoma, mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact, his chef uh, last year, Dan O'Sullivan, also competed, what? and he and he took the third spot. Mm -hmm. And he That's competed great. Iron Chef on stage too. That's great. It's such an event. It's great. It's entertaining. There's mm. music. There's and I'm doing the uh, opening <coughs> MC. You are the MC, MC for the so VIP you'll see hour. Me. You oh. can even get my autograph, and like it's really <laughs> cool. And and then the chef and the the. Um, Oh, the judges. Just name a few of the judges. Yeah, we've got some great judges. Um, if you're from the, the Worcester area, you've seen Alina Eisenhower. Right. She owns she's Sweet, great. which has just expanded to. These guys are good friends the with new, Alina. Yep. And uh, she's also been on the debut episode of Chopped, the yep. network's Chopped. She's been on Cupcake Wars, and she actually won uh, Sweet Genius on Food she, Network. She did. Yeah, and we got Barry Sexton coming up from Philadelphia yep, and a number of other great Is chefs. Is Barbara Hool again a judge? Yes, yep. yes. And she'll... Chris? Chris Liazos. Chris Liazos won't Can't be a judge this, this year, unfortunately, but John Lawrence from Peppers is going to be uh, a terrific judge. Okay, as a closing, go ahead. One, two, three. Away, dark and stormy. I like my rum, dark boys. I like my dark rum. Away, stormy. Carry him to his burial ground. What's the best chef? Yes, thank you so much to Commerce Bank, TJ Woods Insurance, Christian. You make me look this way even with a hat. And <laughs> YMCA and Medical Aesthetics. Thank you so much. And Worcester's Best Chef. And watch my other show, Six Cents and Beyond, on Tuesday nights at 9.30. And stop me anytime you see me and say hello. Have a great day. Okay, Thank let's you, go ahead. Keep playing. Oh, he's keep I'm drinking. drinking. <laughs> One more verse. Sway, sway. Sway, sway. Okay, go. Okay.